Solicitor of Court. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Kerner. Uh, the only thing, it's been a pleasure to work with Mr. Subi and uh, work with him and his staff on uh, getting things in order. It's a pleasure to be back here, and I look forward to working with the new council. Do we have an engineer's report? I think we had that earlier. Uh, mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. Uh, I wanted to share with everyone the uh, Morrisville Police Department was part of a large team effort that included the DEA, Trenton Police Department, and various other law enforcement agencies just a few days ago. Even though the arrest occurred in Trenton, I wanted to mention this because I feel it's important that everyone sees the working relationships that our department has built over the past couple of years. I was able to get some information from the PA State Mayor's Association that I believe all council members should have received in the Friday packet part of an uh, ongoing effort to ensure everyone is on the same page as I've done in the past. I've reached out to the Mayor's Association for a little clarity on issues um, and received some input regarding understandings of protocols that are in place for elected officials. This has been done by me in hopes of not only avoiding confusion but to eliminate any hard feelings in the future. I'm attempting to help build an environment that is conducive for everyone to work together as we move forward. I hope uh, everyone can find a few minutes of free time to, to look it over. Hopefully it'll be helpful. Also tonight on the agenda you will see a motion for a traffic study on Francis Avenue. Uh, I'm not sure why but it seemed to end up in finance. <laughs> um, this isn't a, a new issue. In fact I brought this subject to, about Francis Avenue to council last year at the January meeting. At that time we did have some discussion but it, it didn't really seem to go anywhere from so on Thursday, I, I actually contacted the borough and asked that that book get it to the agenda. I'm hopeful that council will support having the TMA do the study and to supply us with some recommendations. I believe there's no charge for the service as we are members of the Bucks TMA. And um, I believe they may be all for, able to offer some long-term solutions to the congestion on Francis Avenue. So I hope you guys consider it and uh, we'll see what happens. We have the police chief's report. As we end 2015, hand on a very good note. I'd like to prepare three years ago, 2013. I'd like to compare in 2013 where we were. Part one crimes. Part one, one crimes being rape, murder, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, theft, and vehicle theft. 2013, we had 371. In 2014, we had 286. In 2015, we had 189. We've done very well. We've come a long way. Um, just the big notes we had six robberies this year, of which we had five arrests. We had eight aggravated assaults, which most of those were domestic aggravated assaults. All eight were arrested. Our burglaries, I said that was one of my goals this year, to work on our burglary problem. Last year we had 48, this year we had 28. 2014 we only arrested two, and in 2015 we only arrested five. You're gonna say, well, that's not real good. It's not, but burglary is one of the hardest crimes to solve. So this year, as we look forward to next year, we're going to use DNA more. We're going to process the crime scenes better than we did last year. But with the, that being said, most of those burglaries were not houses. They were sheds. And it's one of those things in a unified, unified, unified crime report whether the shed is considered an occupied structure. I consider an occupied structure that gets counted as burglary. Could I knock that number down by a lot? Yeah, but I don't think it's telling the truth. Look to other places around us, everybody codes it differently. So I think I'm coded it correctly. I've been to classes with the FBI on how to code these, and I will not jeopardize our standing in the crime field just to make us look better. So. Um, that being said, we've done very well this year. Um, and um, my biggest
concern, not my biggest concern, one of my concerns moving forward is that how much farther can I knock this crime rate down? At some point from now, you're going to say, good chief, two years ago, you were knocking these numbers down by 30%, 20%, you're down 50% in crime. I don't know how far, how much farther that can go. Because no matter what, I'm not going to be able to stop the, stop the aggravated assaults inside people's houses. You're always going to have some thefts. So, as you see, this is probably going to slow down a little bit. Our efforts aren't. And I'm hoping our arrests go higher. But the numbers are eventually going to have to even out a little bit. So don't be surprised if that happens. Because no matter what, you can't stop all crime. Um, that being said, everybody this month went out to Haverford College for, that, for our second active shooter class. You have one of the most trained police departments in the county right now, an active shooter. We're good. We know what we're doing. We're ready. My department came in $200,000 under budget this year. And I'm very happy to say we have a DARE program, and he's up and running in all our schools, and he's doing a tremendous job. So the police department's back it's the way it's supposed to be. It's a professional in the police department. There's a lot of very good men and women. So anybody have any questions for the end of your numbers? Uh, just congratulations on your accommodation. Everybody knows my email. Please go through the mayor on anything you need, and I will I will handle anything you guys have. Uh, go through my boss, and I'll be more than happy to take care of everything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. We have seven at the student council report. Tonight, um, representing Morrisville uh, School District. First, um, a note of congratulations to senior Denise Sacco, um, who on Monday's uh, basketball game scored her 1,000th point, um, which is a great honor, especially for a high school student, and her name will go on a banner hanging in our gym. We're all very excited for her, um, and especially excited since she scored this 1,000th point in the last 30 seconds of the game, which is incredible. Um, Secondly, and many students are really excited, we're working with an outside um, group that we're starting violin lessons within the school. Um, many students are really excited about participating in all grades, um, and we're really excited that we're doing something to promote the arts in uh, Morrisville School District. Uh, we do a lot of with our sports, but we're also really trying to make sure that we're promoting the arts programs throughout the district. Um, and one just last noting uh, the landmark that we're ending the first semester next week, uh, marking us halfway done through the year. And we're all very excited about that and continuing to work forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's the last report because I have a couple comments if I've got the floor. Sure. Um, Mr. Subi, this is um, before we get to the bills. Um, you have in here, which I'm glad to see, we're going to be um, selling off some of our old vehicles. Yes, and I, correct. Yes, and I have a, uh, a previous list that was given to me by Mr. Bates on some of those vehicles. Um, the other thing I'd like to know is, do you have a, a, a proof of the value of them when they're being sold? Like, did you get a, a, a book value as to what you're going to be expected? And was it advertised anywhere? Was it, how was that put out for that? I don't know how that works. Uh, yes, it was advertised. Uh, however, um, I was given that by the maintenance department, and uh, I can definitely check if you want to see what the value is. Yeah, only because I would, I would, just my opinion, I would think that you would have to have that in order to know about, because you can turn to any, any bid if it's not within what you think your, the value of the trucks are. I just wondered if you had gotten that, you know, and because we didn't get anything on that. So, um, if you just check on the, what, what the value of those are, so make sure what that is. Thank you. Um, the, o the only thing I want to um, say with all due respect to our mayor, um, I was here when we did the contract for the chief, and maybe I have a misunderstanding of Section 18 in that um, contract. When all this went on with um, who contacts who and chain of command, I took it that that was um, 
internal for coming back and forth across from the borough side where it was interfering definitely with the police side. I didn't, I didn't take it that if I was home and, and I saw something that was um, a situation that I made a call to the chief or anyone. Um, I didn't know that was something I had to do as a citizen because you pay taxes if you see something like that. So you're saying that too? Anything like that has to come through you to get resolved? No, I don't know um, why you would think that. Uh, uh, just to clarify, because there seems to be confusion, and that's why I actually have the Mayor's Association. And, and our solicitor's here too, so feel free to speak to him. As an elected official, there's protocol, there's there's a lot of things in borough code, there's, there's directives in place. So <coughs> as an official, you can't run to the chief. However, like you said, as a citizen, absolutely. If anyone, it doesn't matter if you're up here on the dais, if you're a resident, business owner passing through, then of course you call 911. So, I mean, I hope no one tries to play games and manipulate the, what we set in place for two years that's been working. But as an elected official, you, you deal with the borough's uh, council stuff, not, not the police stuff, just the same way as I hope. Try not to intertwine that. I see George came back. Well, well yeah, as I said, I'm just trying to make it clear for myself, too, only for the fact that I had a, a, a constituent in my ward bring up something he was having an issue with, and I have his address and name, so I go give to him, then to give to you. Or, or actually, even don't forget, too, you could always encourage the person to call directly. Here's, here's the situation, okay, and it happened very easily. Sorry, Mr. Pepitone. The person he was speaking with is one of my crossing guards. Okay. I see my crossing guard all the time. Why aren't they calling me? That's the first problem. And I understand you're their representative. I understand it wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. But everybody has my number. I'd rather skip the person and come to me so I can get the right information so I can go out there and fix the problem. Okay. It makes it a lot easier, a lot cleaner. I like the situation we have now. I've been very removed from politics, mm -hmm. and I like it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot more effective. I don't get involved in the stuff that goes on here as much as I can, and it makes me more effective. I would really love to stay that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'd rather you guys play your politics, talk to the mayor, and he gives me everything. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to work together, and if it's something like that, go through him. He gets it to me. Mm -hmm. If it's an emergency, as everybody has a problem in this borough, they'll call everybody else except calling 8111, mm -hmm. our phone number, and calling us. Saturday night at 10 o'clock, I have text messages about a dog and that it's going all through Facebook. <laughs> My question was, did anybody call the police? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Call the police, let us come out and handle these situations. We're here 24 hours a day. We got guys on the street. We want to be out there. I'd rather be out there in front of it than behind it. Mm -hmm. I return every phone call. I return every email at 10 o'clock on Saturday night. So the way the system has been set up till now has worked very well. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like if we could just continue that way and leave me out of the politics and all the mm -hmm. things that go on here. So that's that's my wish if you could you know go with that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Council President? Yes. Uh, I was going to save this for the end before we adjourn, but since the Chief is speaking on the incident and the Mayor has spoken on the incident, can I speak about this? Absolutely. Okay. The only reason I want to bring this up because right now, for people who are watching at home, it's a little cryptic and they don't really understand what happens up. If you don't mind, Chief, I'll just go sure, over no, the situation. Just, okay. On January 6th, I was approached by a resident who asked if I could look into a dangerous traffic condition at the corner of Francis Avenue and Bridge Street. The condition, if ignored, could lead to a motor vehicle accident, serious physical injury, or even death. I took the information from the resident and emailed it to Chief McClay. A short time after I forwarded the email to Mayor Rebell after realizing I did not copy him on it, and I apologized in the email. The next morning, Chief McClay responded and informed me he had directed an officer to address the situation, and I thanked him for it, and I thank you again, Chief. Thirteen hours later, Mayor Ravella sent me an email informing me that he was in full charge of the police department and that I should respect the chain of command in the future 
by contacting him in regards to all matters involving the MPD. Mayor Revelle went on to inform me of Council's role regarding the police department and how we have no role in the day-to-day -day operations of such, insinuating I had somehow infringed upon his authority, which I had not. In this instance, the bottom line is getting the information to whomever can address the situation quickest to prevent accidents or casualties, and that, in this instance, was Chief McClay and the MPD. The accurate sharing of information between resident, representative, and the proper authorities, followed by immediate police response, is government working at its finest. Adding a layer of bureaucracy, or as you said, chief politics, in matters of public safety only endanger lives for the sake of politics, which I find appalling. Additionally, and this is my own opinion, I must correct the mayor regarding his request that I follow a chain of command. A chain of command is a structure within an organization that employees must adhere to. Since I do not work for the mayor nor the police department, and I work for the people of Marsville, I do not recognize a chain of command in an emergency situations such as this. Thank you. Okay, now to debate you. But Brad, this 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 was not an emergency situation. An emergency situation goes through pitch radio and we respond. But my opinion is what it needs to be addressed. But, I'm not debating with you. That's okay, but you, I do work, my, my um, contract was approved by everybody, and you weren't on the board at that time. No, I was not. So you're not, you really don't know what's in my contract. I have your contract so, right here, Chief. Okay, and the mayor's going along with what is in my contract. Absolutely. And I, I you know, and it's not nothing personal to anybody. It just makes things a lot cleaner. Right, and I do have a copy of your contract, and like Councilman Smith said, there is nothing in that contract, and there's nothing from paperwork from the Pennsylvania State Association of Mayors that states that myself as either a council member or a citizen cannot contact a chief or a police officer. In that case, if I would have notified a police officer if I saw first, would that have been okay? Yeah, but, but here we go. Why are we, I mean, you're worried about making another layer, layer of bureaucracy involved in this. No, I'm not. I need, yeah, I need a police officer. Hold on, hold on. Another layer of bureaucracy. One of my employees came to you. Right, yes. And so this, and was, this, this situation was already working in progress and try to get another angle into it. That, well, that, that's, that's, that problem should have came to me directly from my employee that I'm out there with all the time. Oh, I agree with that, absolutely. And so those things, so there was, there was a little back end to that. Okay, well that's on his end, but I have heard that right. about the situation on Francis from other residents on Francis Avenue. Yeah. Okay. Not me. No, no, that's, no, that's, what I get, that's what I get amazed at about things that occur here and they don't contact the right person. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I really like to put out to everybody that my phone's on. My email gets answered all the time. Right. Please come to me. I'll fix the problem and tell you if I can fix it. Right. And you but guys as, know. As we spoke about, being that I am their representative, yeah. if it come to me, it was my duty to notify. You're right. In this instance, I thought it would be you. Right. But the way we have set everything up so far in my contract, my contract, Goes to the mayor. It keeps me. It keeps me out of. A Even lot for of a situation such as, such as this. Yes, because that's not an emergency. That's been going on, like you said, for a long time. As far as I know, yes. Right. So it's an emergency. It goes through police radio. Okay. And then they, and my officers respond to handle well, the situation. Would you have rather me told told them to call nine one one? I would rather. No, I'd rather you tell the, the constituents to call me directly. And I understand that we discussed that. Right, I want that's what I want. I, want no, I understand, that. and I respect that. But yeah. sure. as a representative, face to face with constituents, right? You can't. Say I that. personally can't. don't believe that I should say no. Call the chief, call the mayor, call this one, call that one. I believe that I was elected to represent them and to be that go between. Okay. Now maybe other people disagree, but that's no, not. No, I, no, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. I your respect your request that you just go through to my boss. And we'll filter everything down in that, that way. It's worked very well up till now, and I want to continue to work in this well. Understood. Okay? No. Well, Thank, I, you. Thank you. Thank you. I would Thank like you. to follow up and say that, you know, when I responded, I, I asked to move forward to contact me. I offered a little insight. I certainly wasn't speaking down to anyone. I threw out something. I was actually extending my hand, making a little small talk. Offering a little camaraderie so we could work together. What I received back was, no, I'm not going to do that. That's why I asked the mayor's association. That's why Sean will tell you there's protocol. You know, to say you don't work for me, 
I'm not going to debate that. That's something. But the chain of command is, is a phrase that's it's most reasonable people will understand. It applies to not only employment, but it describes the way organizations of the military, even religious institutions, universities, they, they report to the structure of reporting. So, I mean, if I use the word protocols, you know, maybe that'd be less confusing. I don't know. But it's simple. I'm not trying to give anyone a hard time. There's, there's things in place. If you're new, I would say, please, as we work forward, call me. I think it would be a lot better if you were to say to your constituent, I spoke to the mayor, we put our heads together, we're going to try this, rather than say, I'm not going to talk to you. I don't have to. So, I mean, if you can't bring yourself to, to reach out to me, I'm OK with that. My feelings aren't hurt. So it's mayor Ravel, did I, in fact, forward you the email? Oh, absolutely. And apologize for that? You also said some other things that I thought were absolutely not in the spirit of working together. And I'm not going to debate this. This is a single That's incident. I'm just trying to get everybody together so we can generally work together. I even heard from the residents tonight. They want to see people work together. I'm trying to work together with everyone. But being that the solicitor is here, can I ask the solicitor? Sure. Since you invoke the solicitor's name, in this situation that I explained, can I not go to A, a police officer? or the chief or any police official regarding a situation that I deem to be important and to be, that had to be addressed quickly? As a citizen or a council person? I'm going, to, I'm going to comment as to what the borough code says. The borough code says that the mayor of a borough is the person that supervisor, supervisors and essentially runs the police department. You as a private citizen or an elected official, of course, can reach out individually, but the protocol is is that the police chief works uh, works for the mayor. Correct. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Since That's kind of vague. I, as a citizen or I, as a councilman, cannot approach the chief or any other police officer and say, "Look, I have a problem with you." Now let, let him answer it. Sure. Is there any legal restriction? Do you have any case law? Okay. The borough code says council creates the ranks and describes the duties of the rank. Right? We're going to get into this? You, in, you invoke the solicitor. Let's go with it. We, we make the duties of each rank, don't we? 1121. So in other words, we could make a duty requiring the chief to answer us. Well, yeah, I know it's the protocol. The protocol is not the state law. Now, nobody's trying to go around to Dave, but I, I think for you to, and I spoke to Mr. Pepperton about this, for you to tell any councilman, don't contact the chief or any other part. You go through me. I think you're out of line with that. Well, that's not the And I'm going to tell you this out front. I'll call the chief. I'll talk to the chief anytime I feel like it. As will I. Now, he doesn't have to answer me, I know that. Well, again, as I stated, as if you read the letter from the Mayor's Association, I think there's a clear line. If anyone as a resident, you know, if you wanted to go to the chief and say, you know, surprise, Chip Kelly left the Eagles is what he did, that's not an issue. It's just all I did was ask when you have as a capacity, as in his contract, and as in all this case law, what have you, as an elected official in that capacity. What's the case law say about us contacting a police officer or the chief? It, it doesn't say anything specifically about it. Doesn't. I, I know it doesn't. But what, it, but what the borough code says is he is the supervisor. Yeah, fine. And it also says we make the duties. Shall we move on with the, with the agenda? Yeah, I just, Absolutely. just want to clarify. Thank you. Move on to finance 8A. We have a motion to pay the bills. May I have the bill written? Bill this, please. Yes, you may. Uh, the general fund is $39,266.97. Street lighting fund is zero. Fire fund is zero. Three zeros, that's correct. Uh, okay. Library fund is $2,565.16. Recreation fund is $3,076.29. The sinking fund is $3,084.24. The street fund is $3,650.87. And we move down to 
The TAM fund is three hundred and fifty thousand. And then there's um, Borough Marshfield uh, Officer Jones six hundred and forty-eight sixty-four. And uh, it's a borough. I don't know who that is. Oh, yeah, it's one thousand three hundred and sixty-nine forty for a total of four hundred three thousand six hundred and sixty-one fifty-seven. Since the last meeting, it was one hundred ninety-six thousand eight hundred and twelve seventy-two for a grand total of six hundred thousand four hundred and seventy-four twenty-nine. May I have a motion? So moved. Motion made by Corinne, seconded by Ted. Any discussion on the bills? Oh, you want me to go first? Okay. My favorite subject. Um, check, go right to checks issued since, which would be things that are paid in between the council meetings, which we do have a policy, is supposed to be things that would incur a um, fee, uh, late charge something like that, which is usually insurances. Um, in here though, I'm seeing a, several payments to Johnson Control. I got the budget out and I went over every one of them to see what line in the budget it was paid from. And um, it's uh, one line's out of the water contingency, one's out of another contingency in the water department, another one's maintenance in the water. Um, one was a uh, police budget, I think it was maybe in fuel. Um, one was indirect costs from the MMA, um, and that's on, since I don't have an invoice for them, it's GL1512, page one, first page. Um, second page, GL1512, Johnson Controls. In the budget, it's in the line of recreation fund in the gas and oil line, $5,000. Um, also on that same page, uh, down from that is uh, Johnson Control, gas and line fuel out of the street fund, uh, $4,684.55. First ones I gave you all one, two, three, four, five, and then came out to $31,500. For a grand total of $41,184.55. Now it says here that it's for Project labor materials. I believe this F I N A is probably means final. What what was that for? Why is that why wasn't that paid out of the loan um, for this? Unless it was something that was not in that contract. Well, again, this is from the year uh, fifteen budget. However, from what I was told and passed on to me. This was the final payment for the from the loan that pays for the project that Thunder, um, the lighting system, the heating system, and they, that was held up due to the fact that they then did not finish the project <coughs> at the time when the final payment was due. Mm -hmm. So this was paid in December, mm -hmm. I guess from each line item. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I wasn't involved with this, but from what I was told that this payment had to be due before the, at the end of the year through the 215 budget, mm -hmm. and it was final payment. So this is it. Once this is done, we'll have no more payments except for maintenance with JCI. Yeah, I, um, I'm getting that supposedly the final payment, and we were told that it ran late. Um, it was supposed to be finished in uh, December of 2014, which it wasn't. It ran into the following year. Um, my thing is where it's being paid from, because these line items here was not designated to pay Johnson Control, the, the contractor. And without seeing any information, because there is no invoices on this, but there has to be a work order sheet that gives payment that shows what was done. So was it a repair? What was it something still waiting to get installed? I mean, we have our lights, we have our um, dedicated line, which I think might have to be changed, um, heating system, air, uh, all that. So that's the thing, is where that's being paid from. 
So it's, it's coming out of the budget from mainly the areas you can pull it out of the water department. And the money we get from the MMA I must, is usually for your labor, for your, your borough workers. Um, so I, I need to have definition on this stuff. I'm, I'm not, I mean, I understand it was put in there and approved, pre-approved. And I'm sure if Tom was sitting here, he'd say, oh, well, we approved that contract, so it was already approved. Not, not this, and coming out of there, I don't agree. So I just want to, for the record, this comes up for the vote for this, I am not approving anything on there for JC, JCI for this. So that vendor, 1204, no, not for me. And I, I'd like clarification on what exactly was done to finish up this project. And not, and not again, she misses who you weren't in on this, so I'm just saying I need data for this. That's a that's a big chunk of money. I have to go along with Debbie Smith on this too. Uh, without seeing uh, all the information here, I can't uh, vote on paying that too for a uh, control. Uh, DL one five one two. Vendor number twelve oh four. Any other discussion on the bill list? A roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Kerner. Yes. Mrs. Chronicle. Yes. Mrs. Larison. Yes. Mr. Park. Yes. Mr. Pepperton. Yes. Mr. Sanford. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Everything with exception to that vendor 1205. I'm sorry, 1204, JCI. So it's seven to one in favor of paying the bills. Mm -hmm. Next we have 8B. A motion to authorize the borough manager to request a traffic study to be conducted of Francis Avenue. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Can I count Corinne on that? And a second to Bill. Yep. Any discussion on that? Would you like to enlighten us as to what's going on here? Or not? I would like to see if you microphone. Either add it to the motion or make it understood that. The idea was to reach out to the Bucks TMA because as members, they'll come out and do a, a study, even though it may not be a, like an official study. There is, there is a clause that they put into the study. Uh, so it's no, no charge to the borough to get their insight. And uh, you may remember we used Bucks TMA for a study on Grandview Avenue a couple of years ago. So, but is this involved moving traffic? Well, the study would be to, to let them say it's a narrow street. I, I was up there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, if you remember, I brought this up a year ago. So let's see what they think. Because there, there's ideas that could be you no know, parking on one side or re restrict parking near the curb or make it a one way. So I thought, ask the professionals what they think too. And once we get that back, it, is, it probably won't be an overnight thing. It'll probably take some time to get it scheduled. And that's once we have their opinion, then council can move forward with an idea. Okay. And so just adding by the Bucks TMA to the end of that, is that sufficient? So. Uh, how do my first and second feel about that? The motion would then read, motion to authorize the borough manager to request a traffic study be conducted on Francis Avenue by the Bucks TMA. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Any further discussion? Mm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's his 8-0. Next we move on to appointments, or unfinished business, which is only appointments. We have an appointment for the Municipal Authority, a five-year appointment to expire on 1-4-21. I'd like to nominate Jeffrey Johnson. Are there any other nominations? I'd like to nominate Mike Yeager. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? We have two names on the table. When your name is called, announce your preference. Mr. Cicero. Johnson. 
Mr. Kern. Johnson. Mrs. Chronicle. Johnson. Mrs. Larison. Yeager. Mr. Parker. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Pepito. Mr. Yeager. Mr. Sanford. Johnson. Mrs. Smith. Yeager. And Mr. Johnson gets the nomination, five votes to three. Next, we have two appointments to the Vacant Property Review Committee, set to expire on 1-1-19. One, one, one position will be held by the borough manager. And one is a reappointment of Robert White, Redevelopment Authority. We are fine with both those names. I just need a first and a second. Uh, so moved. First. Second. Is Debbie for first, and Danielle with the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 8-0. Now we move on to 10 new business. 10A is a motion to approve the Winterfest Parade for Saturday, December 3rd, using a route agreed upon by the Winterfest Committee and Chief Police Chief McClay. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. All right. All right. Corinne got the first, and all the council got the second? Can I just pick somebody? Well, who did they get the second? Here? I'm going to give it to Vic. Who? Vic. Vic. I heard for sure. Any discussion on that? <coughs> We know it's early, but that's to help give them time to properly plan. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Passes 8 to 0. We move on to new appointments. First, we have the Zoning Hearing Board. One three-year appointment to expire on 1-6-2019. Do I have any nominations? I always pronounce his name wrong. Hold on. We did send... You can come in a letter, but did not hear back from him. Yeah. Oh, you didn't hear back from him? No, we haven't, to my knowledge. No, we did not. We have not. Oh. Do we want to table this until next time? I would uh, table it. Did you make sure he got it? Yes, I was told that it went out in the beginning, before the end of the year. And was, they tried to contact him, but no. Are they responding? No Are they all on that board? Uh, the board met. Could they? Could they hear Kate? I, there is an alternate, but I, I don't know if it was if that alternate was reappointed. Yeah. He was. Yeah. All right. So there is there is an alternate in case we need him. Right. Okay. Three person board. There's a table. But well, we don't have a vote table yet. Yeah. Well, we haven't even had a motion to make it so. I'm just going to pull that off of the agenda. Pull it until we find out. Yep. Next, we have a landmark town's board of directors, Morrisville Borough representatives, one local elected official position, and one local appointed official position. We'll start with the elected official position. Do I have any nominations? I'd like to nominate Are there any other nominations? I'd like to nominate Debbie Smith. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? We have two names on the table. When your name is called, please state your preference. Mr. Kern. Corinne Chronicle. <laughs> Mrs. Chronicle. Corinne Chronicle. <laughs> Mrs. Lairs. Debbie Smith. Mr. Parker. Corinne Chronicle. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pepito. Debbie Smith. Mr. Sanford. Debbie Smith. Debbie Smith. Mr. Cicero. Chronicle. Mm -hmm. I believe we did not call Debbie. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry, Mrs. Debbie Smith. Hello. Debbie Smith. Mm -hmm. I had your name in there. That's my name. That results in a 4 4 tie, so the mayor, you were on the stage again. Next, we have a local, uh, Corinne Chronicle wins the appointment. Next, we have a local appointed official position. Do I have any nominations for that? Uh, for Mr. Suvi for that. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? All those in favor of appointing Bob Suvi as our local appointed official position, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 8 to 9. 
Next, we have the library board. Three three-year appointments to expire on 3-1-2019. Per library bylaws, the positions must be appointed by borough council at the first monthly regular borough council meeting. For that, we have three serving people who would like to continue in that capacity. They're Mary Morse, Fred Kerner, and Judy Miller. Are there any other nominations? Any discussion? All those in favor of those three? <laughs> Did they send in a letter saying they wanted to be on it? I don't believe they did. Including you? Including me. Okay. Just checking. I talked to them, but there was no letter. Oh. What is it, just yes or no? You can do them all three at one time, is that what you're saying? We can, we can split them up if you want. No matter what everybody does. Yeah. We'll start with me. Fred Kerner for the library board for a three-year term, expiring on 3-1-2019. I will tell you that I'm interested in the position. Oh, thanks, Fred. <laughs> I will also tell you that Judy is interested and Mary. Okay. <clears throat> we'll all call on that. Okay. Mr. Cicero. Kerner. Well, I have to name you. Yes, yes or no. no. Yes or no. We're going to go. Yes or no. Yes. <laughs> three, three names. We do? Yes, yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mrs. Crimble? Yes. Mrs. Larison? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Pepito? Yes. Mr. Stanford? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Kerner is re-elected to that position. He did not get <laughs> Next we have Judy Miller for the same three-year appointment to expire on 3-1-2019. Mr. Cicero? Yes. Mr. Kerner? Yes. Mrs. Cronin? Yes. Mrs. Laris? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Pepito? Yes. Mr. Sanford? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. And finally, Mary Morse for the three year appointment to the library board expiring on 3 1 2019. Mr. Kerner? Yes. Mrs. Grimble? Yes. Mrs. Larison? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Pepito? Yes. Mr. Sanford? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Cicero? What was that name again? Harry Morse. <laughs> oh, yes. I was next. So all three are appointed to the library board for one additional term expiring on 3-1-2019. We move on to 11 announcements. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You forgot my motion. Oh. I asked that the motion put up then 10C. Oh, for the, for the audit. Was this discussed at the agenda meeting? Uh, was it? No, I was asking no. that question. Uh, well, actually, Vicka talked about it too. He said, yeah, you need to do an audit because you changed up managers. At the agenda meeting, you discussed this? Do you want to talk about it, Jenny? Well, we, let's I, the motion. And hold on a second. Hold on. I believe that any of us can put up a motion for an action of the council. I was just asking a question. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying. You know, it wasn't discussed at the agenda meeting. No. Okay. So we have 10C, a motion to authorize the manager to retrieve, receive proposals for audit of borough funds for the year 2015. Scope of work to include a management report. Is this a cash and a time audit? A cash and a time audit? Yeah. There are cash audits and there are time audits. Right, right. You want to come you mean like You mean like the time study we did before? Well, the manager's no, report is going to show you. Time sheets on a snapshot. They usually do a snapshot. They would do some time sheets and they would do the cash report. Well, the management um, report is going to show of any, any deficiency. So I think if you're going to get an audit done, we probably a good thing to do that so okay. we can find out where we have that. Okay. Correct. I just wanted to know if you wanted to do a management, a, a, a time order too. Uh, Does so this be for all employees, police and borough? Oh yeah, that's all employees. If you're doing a time order, you right. do all employees. Management report. Do we know how much that will be? Oh, a lot of money. 
Do we want to research this a bit more before we but do you should, vote? But you should do at least a financial audit because you did have a change in administrators. Right. Correct. So we should have a money audit. But but a time study is separate. We went through that with Cornerstone. That's a separate fee. A management report is just going to tell you where your what areas are yeah, deficient. But and then four orders, four orders have the management level. And then okay. And then if you wanted to do something after you find that, then that's something else we could do. But the management report is just going to show you what areas of your budget are deficient. Yeah, I know that. Work I was on. just asking you if you wanted a time audit too. You said an audit. An audit with the management report to show which areas of our budget, what parts of our budget. I think we should do a time audit. I think we should do a time audit. I think we should include time audit. Well, find out what that difference is then. Because there is a difference, just like... Yes, there would be, you're right. Yeah, so, and then find out what that is. And maybe at that time then decide if you want that. I'm just asking for that management report. Get both courses. Hmm? I have then a motion to authorize the manager to receive proposals for both a time and cash audit of borough funds for the year 2015, scope of work to include a management report. Mm -hmm. right. So this is just to get prices? Right. Okay. Proposals, yeah. 